Hi, this is Tanya from Smart Puppy Learning, and I'm here to show you today how to make a bunting using PowerPoint for your bulletin boards and other classroom needs. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about how to make a pennant um, that uses the triangles to um, go across your bulletin board, and this is going to be for the bunting shape. First, I'm going to open PowerPoint, and I'm going to go and change my layout to blank. And you want to make sure you have the grid lines that you see here on my uh, page. To get those, go to View and go to Grid Lines and select it. You can click it on or off. Then I'll go back over to Insert, and I'm going to go to Shapes. And you're going to choose this really odd-looking shape here. It's called Freeform. I'm going to click on it. The important thing as you're drawing this bunting is to make sure that you don't hold down your uh, mouse. I'm going to show you what happens when you do, and then I'll show you the correct way to do it. If I click and hold my mouse, the lines are real flowy. I don't want that. It's not going to make a good shape for me. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go back over here to Shapes and get my tool here. And so what you want to do is you want to click, and I'm going to choose a little cross point on the grid line here because I'm using those grid lines to help make sure my lines are straight. And I'm just going to click my mouse and not drag, not hold it down, and I'm just going to pull down with my mouse. And then I'm going to click at the next point where I want it to stop and draw up, click again, draw down, click again, up here, click again, and then draw a cross. And you don't want it to be over because that line will hang over. But I'm just going to draw. I'm going to get it. Use that crosshair to get it right as even as I can, and click again. And you can see it fills the shape automatically. This is not wide enough for my needs, so now I can go and I can make it wider or bigger, however big you want it. Uh, keep in mind how big your bulletin board is you're putting it on. The bigger the board, of course, the bigger the bunting letters. But if you make them a whole page big, they will be too big more than likely. <clears throat> um, I've made some even as small as this and put several on a page to spell out words and things, and you can see that in some of the pictures on my on my blog post about how to do this. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, mainly just so I can give you a good view of what's going on. To fill this, you can go to you're going to go to format, and you can put a color in if you want to. Maybe you want it blue, pink, green, whatever. Um, I use the shape line color black. I like it because it's easy to cut out, um, and I have a good guide. I'm going to fill this with a picture, though, to show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go to Format and Picture. No, sorry. And my computer's hanging. Yep, no, that's right. Sorry. Had a, had a little blonde moment there. Uh, go to, I'm going to select a picture. You can go find one uh, from your files. If you want to go and find some backgrounds, you can go to Teachers Pay Teachers. And there's a lot of free backgrounds. There's a lot of backgrounds for just a couple of dollars. I love glitter. Glitters makes me happy. So I'm going to go to my Chevron glitters over here. And I have a ton of them. Uh, these are from Sonia DeHart on TPT. She usually runs some good deals. I'm going to go to Vivid, and I want to do this blue one. So I'm going to click it and insert. Now, do you see the lines are not very, they're, they're smushed here. So I'm going to right-click and format my picture and go to Fill. And I want to tile this picture. I'm going to move this over so you can see what it does when I do this. So you see the chevron squished here. I'm going to click that and it spreads it out. Now you can make it, if you don't like that, you can make the shape a little smaller or if you like it better, more condensed, keep it condensed. In this case, I like it better like this, so I'm not going to tile my picture. I'm going to close it. Then I'm simply going to go insert my text, draw my box, and we're going to write great work on this. So it can be used for a bulletin board for student work. If you're putting the chevron glitter print against the letter, you want to make sure to outline your letter. Otherwise, it can be hard to read. I'm going to go choose a fun font. Oh, let me move that over so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to make it bigger. 
and that can change with the font size you use. I am going to go over here and choose a Kimberly Guesswine font. You can get Kimberly Guesswine fonts uh, for free personal use on Teachers Pay Teachers. If you're using these to make buntings to sell on TPT or in another marketplace like Etsy, you would need to pay for these fonts, uh, for the font license. And that is also available um, through her site and on Teachers Pay Teachers. Some other great font artists are Brittany Murphy, um, Darcy Baldwin, they both have stores on Teachers Pay Teachers. You might also check out um, Kara Carroll, she has some cute ones, and Babbling Abbey as well. I like both of theirs. Okay, I'm going to choose blank space solid. You don't want to use a sketch image or something like this when you've got that busy of a background. If the background was solid color, I might would be prone to using something like the sketch background. But I'm going to do blank space solid. I like to use white because it just saves on printing, to be honest. Uh, if you want a color, though, you can use a color. Um, maybe a pink if you go to more colors. I do a lot of hot pink and blue. Those are my store colors on Teachers Pay Teachers. So you could do pink like that if you wanted to. But you can tell still it's just a little busy. So I'm going to click it back to white. Okay, And I want this a little bigger. So, and you can still play around with your font size, your uh, what your font looks like, and your letters look like by going over here. And um, I've got that black line on it, but the line's awfully thin, so I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bigger. That way, it's easy to be seen. Now I'm going to select the G, and I'm going to click Shift and select my bunting, and Control C, or you can go right click, copy, right click, paste and then control V to paste. So now I have two of these on a page. I'm going to kind of scoot them over a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to change this one to an R. I want a capital. So now I can go, I've got two of my letters. I of course need more than that. So I can go, instead of having to redraw all this and continuing to have to redo it, I'm going to go over here and click the actual slide and click control C and control V and it gives me another one and there again if you are not as big on keystrokes you can right click and click copy and then right click and this right here your paste options I just do the first one from the clipboard there and it's the same thing so I've got my GR I'm going to go back up here to my second one and I'm going to click so I'm going to highlight it I'm going to change it to an E Change this one to an A. Next page, I'm going to do a T for great. And a W. And I need another page, so Control V. There it is. O. And the R can stay, ironically. And then a K. Now, I can either put an exclamation point, which I like to do because I get excited about things. Um, or if you don't want to, you can always select them both and just delete it to save on your ink. Um, bring that back with a control Z. So now I have my bunting and I can print it and cut it and hang it up and it took me a whole 10 minutes to make, less than 10 minutes. Um, and I hope that you'll find this just as easy and a fantastic way to decorate your classroom. One more printing tip. If you are going to download really cute fonts and you put them on your home computer and you go to school, you want to email this because you can print in color at school. For those of us that have access to color ink um, at school, I personally don't, but it is a fantastic thing when you do. Um, you're going to lose this font whenever you email that file to yourself or save it to your Dropbox. A way to help you with this, though, is to go to File and click Save As, and I'm going to go just save this on my desktop. I'm going to call it Great Work Bunting. Now, instead of saving as a PowerPoint to send, I'm going to save it as a PDF. So I go to Save As Type PDF and click Save. I'll show you what it's going to do for you here. And bam, there it is. So here this is, and this file is ready 
to be printed. Um, and see, all the letters are there. So when you open this Adobe Acrobat um, file open on your school computer, you're not going to lose that font like you will if you send the PowerPoint. Uh, and then you just go to file and print, same as, as always with anything. Um, but this is a great tool to help you secure those fonts and keep it looking cute because that to me is something that matters. It makes my life happy. So um, my name is Tanya again from Smart Puppy Learning and I thank you for tuning in today and I wish you a great year and happy decorating in your classroom.